Hey guys and welcome back to my uh, budget deck channel with today a deck that is I think uh, budget wise you have to kind of look into this a little bit uh, with what can you afford, what are the price of the time lords, what are the price of the hand traps but with dual devastator if I'm not mistaken being just around the corner there are uh, the prices of the hand traps that you see in here will drop dramatically so you will be able to uh, acquire all of this deck basically uh, between like I would say 45, 40 to 70, 80 bucks maximum I would say so this is totally fine and I try to make the the variant as competitive as possible which is weird for time lords at, at the start people thought like oh yeah this deck's gonna gonna do stuff but now people were like mm, is it is it not uh, I feel like it might be honestly I think uh, it might be which uh, I will talk about in a second. But starting off, one sa uh, Sandion, San Sandion, whatever it is, uh, the Time Lord, the guy that basic. I'll just call them what they are. It's the guy with the attack, but you can't really attack. It's literally you can get over boss mode, so you can uh, switch the ratios of cards like that. The side decks as well. If you want to play this guy at three, which I would understand, that is one of the ones where I wouldn't argue with you if you said like, oh, kind of want to play it at three because it helps you technically beating over things uh, which is okay so uh, I mean you can't do damage with it but then uh, in the main phase like at the end of battle phase you inflict 2000 damage which can finish the game can be quite neat but I didn't feel like it was a crazy 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 card plus a half monster removal in a sense in the deck so I felt like that wasn't super necessary to run about three but you could next one which I feel like yeah the drawback with this card is kind of heavy but also I kind of like the effect the guy that uh, shuffles as many cards your opponent controls as possible into their decks and then they draw cards equal to the number shuffled into their main deck which mm, yeah first of all i think you're gonna try and disrupt your opponent as hard as possible so they shouldn't get that much anymore uh, a lot of decks uh, like especially combo decks will already have used a lot of their play starters then and they will have like more extra deck monsters on there so uh the cards uh, the play starters will not be shuffled back into the deck so what they draw if you're lucky enough isn't what they actually need so you can't they can't come back from it that's my kind of point of view and if they go if it's like a trap heavy deck whatever they probably don't let you summon this guy anyway um, that's why uh, I only play uh, the Zafia Knight one because I feel like if your opponent plays like Stun Trap Heavy Deck, then they'll probably not let you do uh, <laughs> the effect of this card anyway. So I feel like uh, this card is only good if you're playing against stuff that has a lot of face up spell trap cards that can be annoying that stop you from doing certain things uh, like weather painters or whatever it is those kind of digs i feel like this card is good against otherwise not super good i mean at least if this card is sent to the griever you can draw a card which can come in handy from time to time i guess way better here is the mission the time lord um because this guy at the end of battle fails have your opponent's life points can be quite neat uh, getting him from eight thousand to four thousand at one point, yeah, it will be a little bit weaker, but I still think uh, that is fine. If you want to, you can t put two of them out and put two of him in because it's somewhat the same kind of uh, thing. Plus, this card is searchable due to being zero attack uh, and you have the time uh, maiden, basically. So this card is not going to be searchable. So, you know, you all have to see where your priorities are. Uh, Metai on the Time Lord, a card that I really like, return as many monsters on the field as possible to their hand. Well, some uh, don't, but it's, the problem is monsters uh, yours as well, but you will not have that many other monsters beside the Time Lord, so that doesn't matter. And if like 300 damage to your opponent for each card returned, like, you'll probably be inflicting around 900 to 1500 depending on what is mainly or let's say even 600 there's there's decks that are not that strong especially if you want to counter them with the hand trap brigade that's coming up now a triple ash blossom will be a little bit cheaper i think for a budget deck it's fair to say this car is basically budget now uh so is ghost ogre only run two ghost ogres because uh i feel like this is the card this this card can really shut deck down this is a card that just decreases your opponent's field a little bit and if you you can only use it once per turn so you don't necessarily want to draw two here you're willing to take the risk because well you know it, it can do quite a lot but if you want to or if you don't want to pay the price you can bump that card down to two as well a card that i've not seen play as much and i feel like right now even for budget players is the time because all the extra deck monsters of like uh, decks that are better right now the, the the key cards aren't really expensive sure you will have to be willing to go the mile but this deck doesn't need an extra deck whatsoever and uh it, the, the most cards that you play against they, they cost basically nothing for like 10 
10 quid, maybe at 15, you can basically get all the starters for this card to shut down most matchups for yourself. So that is quite a neat card. Sure, you can argue if you want to or not, but I feel like in a deck where you don't want to play Port of Extravagance because it's super expensive, uh, filling your extra deck with cards that actually can give you a massive advantage over your opponent because I feel like they don't even expect this kind of card to come up anymore that much as well. Uh, super neat. Trust me on that one. That one is going to hit them hard. Uh, Tai Maiden basically searching your cards. I wish I could search the 4000 as well. So you might want to play with the ratios a little bit. But in general, gives you access to any kind of Time Lord cards that you want. Uh, special summonable. Technique could tribute summon then. Not sure why because... <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. This, I, I will see what, what this card does because the technique is the exact same thing. Normal summon the other one, then after you special summon that. Whatever, whatever. But time made and search of stuff. Uh, Effect Valor, you could actually play like where after win this deck because you have uh, quite the brigade of level one monsters I just noticed, but I don't think it would make much sense. Effect Veiler here for, well, effect negation, it's not once per turn, so you can screw your opponent up with two of those other things as well. And some decks are quite vulnerable. Being hit by one or two of them can shut their plays down and can actually give space to uh, for your time lords because the problem with time lords, I'll just address that right here, is time lords going first, not really, because your opponent has enough removal that just targets which is a problem because they, if they had the cost, oh, they can't be targeted, that would probably make it better. You could argue play Mount of the Burnt Creator, but uh, with Mystic Mind Bearer and stuff, people have enough uh, spell trap card removal to then afterwards get rid of uh, your Time Lords as well, if that is basically you only kind of play first turn. So going first turn with this deck, not really helpful. You can't use the main effects. This card will just shuffle when those cards will shuffle back into the deck and you've basically achieved nothing. So going second is kind of what they want to do. But then you have to play through tons of negates and if they get rid of your Time Lord after you normal summon it, then your turn is basically dead. So what you want to do is play a lot of hand traps, make sure they can maximum get one negate on board, try to bait this negate somehow or the destruction and uh, then hit them with one of the stronger Time Lords, shuffle all this stuff back and hope that's going to be enough for you to actually end the game. Um, I run triple uh, Eater of Millions. You could run a Grand Magio too in this deck as well if you really feel like it for uh, a little bit more damage. But since your normal summons will already be taken by the uh, Time Lords, I thought, okay, what other monster is uh, fair enough that you can special summon that kind of helps you. This is monster removal, basically. This uh, can get up with Pot of uh, Desires to a fair amount of attack damage at least. And... Uh, yeah, special summonable as well. So I feel like this card actually has some use in this deck. I triple the actual protection for targeting, which I felt came in handy quite a lot, especially against Salman Great with their targeting effects or Sky Strikers, because if your opponent can't target you, uh, then, or at least you can negate the one targeting effect that could possibly screw over your Time Lords, then that card is pretty neat. Technically even for extra deck monsters, if you're uh, super poorly and stuff for game, but uh, that being said, I feel like this card can be quite nice. Uh, one for one, well, you run some level one monsters. Mainly you want to use it for your time being since you run a lot of other monsters. If you have any hand traps level you don't want to, you just want to start your place, you don't have any of the uh, time loss in your hand, then you can go for one for one or you just want a different one as well. Can help you with the time being as well. So that is pretty neat because it does, uh, like the time maiden doesn't have the clause that she can only be special summoned by effect. So one for one is fine with that. Power of Desires, well, you don't have any cards in here that are super crucial to your strategy that you can't lose. Plus you can always use it after you use like time maiden's effect and stuff. Don't want to banish all three of them, but how much is that actually going to happen? So I feel like this is nice. Plus it kind of supports each of millions a little bit. And you kind of want to draw engine for the deck. Maybe bait the one negate that your opponent has with this card because they don't want you to plus off of that. And yeah, talking about plusing advanced draw a card that you can run in the Time Lord kind of decks. You could run something else, but I feel like it works especially well with Super Poly or even the Bureau. If Super Poly gets banned, uh, as one of my guesses or goes back to one or whatever, then putting the Bureau into it maybe possibly does somewhat the same, but it's easier counterable. But Advanced Draw would still work on the Bureau if I'm not mistaken. So you could still draw off of that card because you really don't need the Nibiru on your field most of the time. Uh, so that is basically fine. But in, in the end, like getting rid of your Time Lords, maybe in main phase two, drawn into more hand traps so your opponent can't do anything or Eater of Millions or whatever could be nice. But since your Time Lords are also your defense wall, 
maybe you'll just uh, eat one of those targets with it or whatever you want. I feel like this is a card that's debatable but came in handy from time to time. A super poly, well, why wouldn't you play super poly if you can? Uh, especially in this deck where you don't really have any restrictions for exit deck because you don't run any monsters. You sure will have one discard. You probably, uh, it doesn't hurt you too much. It can be annoying, but you will find a card to be discarding uh, when you go second. And uh, yeah, go into the extra deck with that one. Uh, you don't have to run this, but I guess that's an upgraded version of the Star Venom, uh, Starving Venom Dragon, which is quite nice, but only works obviously if your opponent has three darkest monsters, so you could cut this card if you don't like it. Uh, Salamon Great Violet Chimera helps you OTKing uh, Salamon Grades as well, if you really want to. It's gonna be a hard one, because you, there's not much follow-up damage, but with the 200 burn damage of, uh, or the other burn damage of some of your, uh, some of your little time lords, then that can be crucial. Star Venom, pretty good, nukes the field if you need to. It's, well, you know, super poly target, super poly target, super poly target, if you want to be quick. Um, one Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon, Gustav Max, for if you ever be able to get this card out, because technically you can get two out with the Time Maiden and stuff, but it's, mm, it's not really likely. But there's, there's a, I think there was a way how you can do this, so, uh, yeah, why not run it? The extra deck space isn't necessarily tight. Uh, Cyber Dragon Nova, because Cyber Dragon's on the rise, you can obviously go for the Cyber Dragon Link Monster, one of the fusions or whatever, but I felt like if they wanna, the stuff that hurts you the most is if they actually set up negates and that stops them from doing it because they can't get off their impermanent, uh, like their uh, infinite, in, infinite, infinity? You know what I mean, the, the one that I always plonk on, on top of that one. So, uh, that would be fine. Uh, Heavy Metal Falls Electrum for the Endymion decks. Not that they really care about them, but I feel like they don't care about the extra deck all that much in general. So I feel like uh, not much to hit them there, but if anything, then uh, Pendulum decks will be hit by that. If it's Pendulum Guard Dragon, might as well hit LP. Um, any kind of Orcus deck, I guess Mermaid, you could go for the Link to Orcus as well if you want to, just to have more options. You don't need to run all the Sky Striker ones, but I've not played Strikers enough to really decide which one's a crucial one, because seemingly they can deal without Kagari, so I don't know if uh, Shizuku is probably the searcher, so if you get rid of her, they can never search. That could be nice, I guess, I don't know. And for any kind of uh, weird shenanigans like Assault, there's some, if there's still some warrior link decks, there's gonna always be stuff like that. And Salaman Gate, Sunlight Wolf. If you wanna put some hero monsters in there or whatever, Dystopia possibly, um, if they're on the rise, then yeah, you can obviously choose uh, and change a lot of things. But that being said, none of them cost really much. Back in the days where like, uh, with spirals and stuff, you had to pay shit tons of money to actually uh, pull off the Ghost Reaper today, that's not that much of a problem anymore. Hope you enjoyed the deck profile, that's basically it. For the side deck, I'll talk about stuff like Forbidden Dress, Could you could include it if you want to. Wasn't sure if it works though, if, you're, if your monster can't lose 600 attack, wasn't quite sure about the ruling in that kind of sense. Uh, Mount of the Bound Creator, a card that you could run instead of uh, this guy, but I felt like uh, it can be easier destroyed than uh, a hand trap kind of card in your hand, because that is not, uh, that can only be negated, but not like removed, so I feel like this is uh, quite neat in my opinion. And uh, other than that, Dark Ruler No More is a card that you can easily cite in uh, any of the other Time Lords where I felt like were kind of wasted because you don't really need the effect too much. There's this card where you can like shuffle one card back, you could run that in the side deck, all those kind of things. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the deck profile. Hope you <laughs> gave me a chance. I know most people don't watch the video, but subscribe, like, uh, and uh, hope you're having a good day.